Welcome to the EQ Fit Podcast. Our mission is to equip people to prosper in every aspect of their life. Whether you're at home or in the workplace, we explore practical ways of improving success, satisfaction, finding balance, and building enjoyable and beneficial relationships. Thank you for joining us. If I say the word resilience, what does it mean to you? Is it the ability to push through when you need to, when you're under pressure? Maybe it's bouncing back from a setback or challenge that you've got in your life. That's what I want to focus on today. Building emotional resilience, which really is at the foundation of any kind of resilience in your life. Physical resilience, yes, you can build your body up, you can do physical exercise and all of that, but it is your brain that drives your body. So if you don't have the emotional resilience to put your physical resilience into play, then it just isn't going to come together. It's not going to happen. I want to start just sharing a a few thoughts, a few observations over the years of people that I have seen grow their emotional resilience. Over the last few years, I've worked with a number of partner groups, partners who own organizations. And I've noticed in that, that there are some similarities. There is generally one partner that has higher EQ, emotional intelligence, and seems to be a lot more resilient. And there may be another partner or two that don't have that high emotional intelligence. They don't have that higher level of emotional resilience. And there's a lot of conflict and there are a lot of issues that come out of that divergence of the ability to be emotionally resilient. Where pressure comes and stress comes, the higher emotionally resilient individual can handle that so much better and continue to move forward. Whereas the people with less emotional resilience tend to get stuck and they tend to cycle in negative emotional cycles, frustration, fear, judgment, things that keep them stuck. And so it's important that we think about our internal resources and emotional resilience being one of those key internal resources. The next challenge that comes along, the next opportunity that comes along, will you have the emotional resilience you need to overcome that challenge or to take advantage of that opportunity. I think of another situation. I had the great joy and opportunity to work with someone in their 20s and coach them through some difficult things in their career and in their life over the last couple of years. And I watched this individual grow in their emotional resilience in a way that put them in a much better place What did that emotional resilience do for them? It gave them more confidence. It helped them in their relationships. It helped them to set good boundaries so they could find better balance in their lives. And I love seeing people blossom. And I don't care whether you're in your 20s or whether you're in your 60s or 80s. Everybody can grow in these things. That's the beauty of leveraging the skills of emotional intelligence. So let's break this down into some component parts and talk about how do we build emotional resilience? Well, first, we need to talk about the importance of it. And where does it come from? It comes from two primary things. To be emotionally resilient, you need flexibility and you need adaptability. And I would add to that adaptability, think of adaptive thinking. How good are you under pressure to be innovative and and to have adaptive thinking skills working at a high level? Here's what we know, and this is proven by science and research. 
If you are experiencing strong emotions, it is much more difficult to access your higher cognitive functions. So your thinking skills like abstract thinking and numerical reasoning and logical thinking and strategic thinking and adaptive thinking. That's just to name a few of those higher level thinking skills. So what allows you under stress and pressure or when you're feeling strong emotions to access those skills? Guess what? It's emotional resilience. Well, flexibility and adaptability is where we're going to start. Emotional flexibility allows us to adjust our responses and approach circumstances in the way that will get a better outcome. Uh, We need to be able to maintain our focus on our goals and what we want to see come out of a certain situation. And to do that, we need that flexibility, that emotional flexibility. Now, adaptability is a key indicator of emotional intelligence. The higher the emotional intelligence someone has, the more likely they are to be adaptable. Why? Because we can be more change embracing instead of just automatically pushing away change or running from it or avoiding it. So adaptability is a key indicator of emotional intelligence. It enables people to navigate uncertainty and change without being overwhelmed. And that's what we want to see. We want to see that ability to take change as it comes and then leverage our emotional resilience in a way that allows us to navigate that uncertainty and that change. So many roadblocks in life are self-imposed and we just don't need to put those things in our own way. So more emotional resilience through emotional flexibility, emotional adaptability is going to help us remove a lot of those self-imposed roadblocks. Now, flexible individuals, they can leverage a growth mindset to seek opportunities with challenges other than viewing them as a problem or as a threat. And that's really perception if you think about it. How do you perceive something that comes your way? Is it a threat? Is it a problem? Or is it an opportunity? Is it maybe a a chance to grow? a chance to learn something new. That's the difference between flexibility and being not flexible. Another way to look at that, and you have probably heard a fixed mindset versus a learning or an open mindset. Well, in a very simplistic way, that's one way to look at this. If you have a fixed mindset, you're not trying to learn anything new. You don't want to be flexible. You don't feel the need to be more resilient because you have already decided you know everything you need to know and you don't need to worry about anything else. Well, we all know that's a problem in our ever-changing world today. That is why the growth mindset, the open mindset is so important. When I do work for organizations, especially when it comes to developing leaders or hiring talent, When I help organizations do those things, I'm looking for people with a growth mindset, with an open mindset. They're willing to learn. They're willing to grow. They're coachable. Because if you don't have that, then that individual may or may not fit into the culture, but there is no room for growth. And that's a problem. So as we continue looking at flexibility and adaptability, when it comes to building emotional resilience, um, emotional adaptability helps to maintain positive relationships under stress. There are many ways we can deal with stress. And unfortunately, at times, and we've all done it, we just lash out at somebody else. There was a situation recently, I was talking to one of the people I'm coaching and there was a situation in their office where they were trying to get something done and their boss just lashed out at him and, and used 
language that may not have been appropriate. And anyway, it was just one of those unfortunate things. And I know that, that the boss, I know the boss, I have coached the boss as well. And I know that's not who that person is. What the employee doesn't understand is everything that's going on in the boss's life. Now that's not an excuse. Okay. I'm not excusing bad behavior. I'm not excusing language that's inappropriate. I'm not excusing lashing out of people. What I'm saying is it's easy to judge people when that happens, but maybe if we practice more curiosity than judgment, uh, we could talk through those things and resolve those conflicts better. But you've got to have the emotional resilience to do that. If you don't have that emotional resilience, it's very difficult to move forward with somebody when something like that happens. So being able to maintain positive relationships. And one of the things I say all the time, it's, it's a principle that I use, assume positive intent. Don't assume the person is destructive and negative and wants to do evil to you. If we can assume positive intent, then a lot of what we build up in our minds as far as story goes to fill in the gaps of the facts that we know, it allows us then to move forward in a, in a better way versus getting stuck. And that's why assuming positive intent is important. And helping maintain positive relationships, that's a big part of it. And that's where emotional adaptability comes in. If we experience something like that, where somebody lashes out at us, we have a choice. I mean, and the the survival brain tends to kick in, right? So it's fight, flight, freeze. And somebody recently has added a new one called appease. Uh, but bottom line, that's very normal if somebody lashes out at you. But in our world today, none of those are really good answers fight is not a good answer. Flight is not a good answer. You know, freeze is not a good answer. What do we need to do? We need to set good boundaries so we can find better balance in our lives. And setting those boundaries helps to build those positive relationships. Again, though, we're going to have to be emotionally adaptable to be able to do that. And then what we know about healthy organizations When there are adaptable leaders and adaptable team members, they are much more likely to thrive in our dynamic world today. Um, As adaptability encourages innovation and proactive problem solving. So you talk about getting ahead of the game or being proactive. That's what we're talking about. But you can't get there without that emotional resilience that's so important. So let's take a moment and just talk about how emotions can either hinder or enhance resilience. Negative emotions like fear, frustration, uh, even judgment can deplete your energy and hinder problem solving, making challenges feel insurmountable. I just can't overcome that. It's too much. I'm overwhelmed. However, more positive, productive emotions like hope, determination, optimism, they fuel persistence and enable individuals to stay motivated under pressure. And that's why we need to practice these. Did you know you could practice emotions? You really can. Emotions are going to give you information and energy, and you can leverage the limbic system in your brain to practice emotions in a very positive way. But you've got to be emotionally resilient. If you're just negatively impacted by everything that's going on around you and you allow yourself to stay stuck in that cycle of fear, frustration, and judgment, you're not going to be able to move forward very easily. And you're not going to get the results that you desire. That's why talking about this emotional resilience is so important. Um, Self-awareness a key component of emotional intelligence um, really helps us understand emotional states that we're in, 
so we can better regulate self-regulation. There's another major component of emotional intelligence. Self-awareness allows us to better practice self-regulation, which reduces the likelihood of just being reactive instead of being more responsive. Take time, think it through, respond in a better way. Don't just knee-jerk reaction. Also, emotion service signals to us. Understanding their source can undercover understanding their source can uncover underlying needs or priorities that aid in building resilience. That's called recognizing patterns, which is a skill of emotional intelligence, one of the key skills of emotional intelligence. Emotion service signals. Understanding their source can uncover underlying needs or priorities that aid in building resilience. That is a key skill set of emotional intelligence that's called recognizing patterns. If we can recognize our patterns, we can opt out of them, we can stay in them, we can build better patterns down the road. And then harnessing our emotions, which we call navigating emotions, another skill set of emotional intelligence, can constructively enhance our resilience by transforming stress into a motivator for action and growth instead of something that demotivates us. You know, it's funny. I'll talk to some owners or CEOs of organizations and they don't want to hear much about emotions. So I use another term with certain people and that's called mental toughness. And they like that. They love that term. But it's still emotional intelligence. So let me talk a little bit about strengthening mental toughness. Here are some ways to do that. Number one, practice mindfulness. Again, I define mindfulness as taking a moment, taking a few minutes even, and just where am I? Where are my thoughts? Where are my feelings? What's going on? It's taking inventory. It's assessing what's going on right now so that you can reset, you can realign, you can do what you need to do to move forward in a better way. And practicing mindfulness here can help enhance emotional regulation and help us remain focused in the present moment during stressful situations. Then we can build a personal resilience plan. What does that look like? Well, we need to deal with stress management techniques like exercise, maybe it's journaling or deep breathing, whatever it is that allows you to release some of the stress, allows you to engage a more optimistic approach and helps us to move forward in a way that is more productive and gets us to the outcomes that we want. We can strengthen our problem-solving skills as well by reframing challenges as opportunities to develop new strategies or solutions. So many times when I talk to people and coach them around some of these areas that are so important to success and satisfaction in life and in work, what I find is they are perceiving something in one way that is keeping them stuck. But reframing that perception in a new way opens a path forward. And it's all in our brain. It's all going on in our minds. Here's another way we can really enhance our our mental toughness. Set realistic but challenging goals which will help to build confidence in us, but through incremental success and perseverance. A lot of people I know set big goals and they're very disappointed because they don't make them. Well, it's okay to have those big goals, but have some goals along the way, some mile marker goals that continue the momentum and help you get wins along the way. And then cultivate emotional support systems to provide encouragement and perspective during tough times. Okay, what is that? What is, how do we 
strengthen our mental toughness through emotional support systems? Well, that could be so many different things. It could be having a trusted person that you talk to about how you're feeling and what's going on for you. Maybe it's a coach like me, or maybe it's a certain journaling practice where you get away from things for a while, you write things down. What was the situation? What was I thinking? What was I feeling? What happened? What did I decide to do? What action did I take? What was the result of that? Now, if I could go back and change something, what would I change? That's a wonderful practice uh, that helps emotional support by literally putting things down on paper or digitally on your computer or wherever you want to do that. There are many different ways to get these emotional support systems. It may be as simple as turning on some music that you know is calming and just allowing yourself a period to let your brain rest. Maybe it's 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it happens to be. But understanding what those are, setting good boundaries to get good balance is critical. Okay, now let's look at some practical ways to actually put this into play and and just practice what we want to do to build this emotional resilience. Number one, we can learn from our setbacks, our mistakes, which I call turning failure into fuel. Resilient people view failures as valuable feedback rather than personal shortcomings, which fuels continuous improvement. You know, that whole thing in manufacturing or even in other areas about continuous improvement, it works for us as well. We can fuel continuous improvement by looking at setbacks, not as shortcomings, but as opportunities to grow and to move in new directions. And if you're resilient, you can do that. This is why resilience is so important. It literally impacts everything in your life. The way that you go about what you do, the energy that you have to do it, those those things that we focus on, everything can be enhanced by enhancing our resilience. We can reflect on setbacks through self-awareness. What does that do? It helps us to identify patterns and then adjust future approaches. So this is a realignment process. We can better understand from our setbacks how we can do things better in the future and get better outcomes. We can embrace failure as a part of the process that fosters risk-taking and innovation critical for our own personal growth and our professional growth. Failure is simply a chance to move forward and get it right in the future, do it better in the future. And honestly, what I've seen in the 40 years I've been doing this is that failure is a wonderful motivator to learn, to grow, and to try new things. Because, hey, it didn't work that way. Let's try something different. Share lessons learned from failures uh, to inspire other people to build a culture of resilience within teams. I love this one because it really speaks to what great leaders do. Great leaders have no problem sharing the mistakes they've made and the pain that they've gone through with others so they can help enhance others' performance, help them not have to go through and make the same mistakes. And that is why we share those lessons that we learn. And that's where great leaders come in. They're very honest and transparent about the mistakes that they've made. They know they're not perfect, but they do something about it and they do something with it, which is important. Emotional intelligence helps to process the disappointment of setbacks 
while staying focused on long-term objectives. And this is where the heart of emotional resilience is. Being able to move forward, even in the face of setbacks, mistakes, failures, whatever comes your way. And we're all going to have those things. But that's why building emotional resilience through leveraging emotional intelligence is so important. Then we can start to understand why it is so important to practice optimism or what we call exercise optimism, which is another skill set of emotional intelligence. We need to exercise that optimism and the resilience that we are building. Optimism provides the psychological strength to view challenges as temporary and surmountable. We can overcome those things. You know what that does? It enhances our persistence and our confidence so that we can move forward. Positive thinking increases problem-solving capacity by broadening our attention and generating creative ideas, generating new innovation, new ways of doing things. And this isn't that positive thinking mindset of, well, fake it till you make it or whatever. This is truly being optimistic. What is optimism? It's looking to the future with hope and possibility. That is what optimism is. So when we practice optimism, when we have these these positive thoughts, we can actually increase our problem solving. Remember when I talked about accessing our higher thinking skills? One of the easiest ways to do that is through optimism and leveraging our resilience. If we can do that, you will have access to your higher thinking skills consistently, even under the most strenuous of stress and pressure situations. Optimism reduces the psychological effects of stress, which protects our mental and physical health during difficult times. This is a whole uh, new area of focus called well-being. It isn't just physical. It isn't just mental. It's not just emotional. It's all of those things put together. And optimism really helps to reduce the negative impacts of stress and pressure, anxiety, all of those things. Also, when we think about optimism and resilience, if we can cultivate gratitude, it reinforces optimism by focusing on what is working well, even amidst the challenges. So it really gives us the opportunity to practice a thankful mindset. What are you thankful for today? There are many things in my life I'm thankful for. And I look at those things when I'm feeling overwhelmed. I look at those things when I feel stressed because it reminds me that there's a lot of good in my life. And we need that. That is so important to all of us. I'm going to speak to leaders now for just a second. Optimistic leaders inspire resilience in their teams by fostering hope and confidence, even in the face of adversity. So you can be that guy that lashes out at others because you're stressed, or you can be that guy that is optimistic and inspires their team and in really infuses hope and confidence in team members by taking the higher road. Now, I'm not judging anybody here. We all have those days, and I am one of these people that has those days as well. As much as I study this stuff, as much as I research it, as much as I teach it, coach it, practice it, I have those days too. But the real question is, what do you do with those days? Do you go back and rebuild those bridges that you burned? Do you go back and make things right? Do you learn from that? If this is, if it's a failure, if it's a mistake, what do you do with it? All of this is a part of the emotional resilience 
that we're talking about that is so important to our success and to our satisfaction and to that of the people around us. So as we kind of close this out today, let me let me share this last little bit of, of wisdom I actually have learned through the last several decades. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So if we want to consistently show up for other people in the best self that we have, then we need to build our emotional resilience so that whatever's going on in our lives does not come out in a negative fashion to other people. We need to build our emotional resilience so that we can face stress and pressure as a champion, that we can overcome it, that we look at challenges, that we look at, at problems as opportunities so that we can move forward and get better outcomes. And then the people around us that see us being resilient, the funny thing about emotions is they're contagious. And if you present as stressed and anxious and fearful and worrisome and all of those things, that's contagious. But if you present as optimistic and joyful and excited and courageous, that's contagious too. So which environment do you want to live in? The reality is we create the emotional environment we live in and we choose to live in that environment. I'd suggest choosing the emotionally resilient environment by practicing optimism, by practicing all of these things we've talked about. I guarantee you This will make a difference every day. It's going to move the needle for you because it does for me. Thank you for joining us for this episode. If you have any questions about this week's episode or maybe a suggestion for future episodes you'd like us to explore, please contact us through our website at eqfit.org. For more information and inspiration, Connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube at EQFit.